five, four, three, two. Tier one performance. To the In-N-Out Talks, powered by Tier 1 Performance Guys. Today's special guest, Asia James. She played Division 1 college softball at UConn, and we got a lot in store for you guys today. Asia, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So you are a native Houstonian, correct? You're, you're born and raised in Houston? So I was born in Virginia. I'm actually an Army brat. Oh, wow. So, so you moved around growing up. I was on the tail end of things since I'm the baby of my family, but uh, I was born in Virginia, and then... I grew up in Texas, moved around in Texas. Awesome, awesome. And so you kind of settled in like like spring area, North Houston, mm -hmm. and that's where you played your high school softball at. Yep. And, and at what age did you realize, okay, I'm pretty I'm pretty solid at sports and softball in particular? Uh, maybe probably like my sophomore year of so, high school. Okay. Yeah, I like to consider myself. A late bloomer is. Uh, I used to play. What's it called? Um, what's it called when you play at the? I didn't have a select team. I no think. select. You just play league. League ball. Yeah. League so ball. I played league ball. It says which is right up the street from my house, and I was better than everybody there. So I basically needed to be pushed, and my parents put me. Well, I, my high school coach actually talked to my parents and told them that, oh, she needs to be pushed up or moved up. Yeah. So they introduced me to Scrapyard Dogs, and it was like I went from the top to the very bottom, had to start all over again. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Scrapyard Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> like, so were you a multi-sport athlete growing up, or were you just like softball? That was your thing. I was a multi-sport growing up. Um, in high school, when I got to high school, I did volleyball. And softball, I really wanted to do track, but my coach told me, like, you know, when we get to this level, you need to choose one sport and focus on it. So I chose softball. Okay. But if I had a chance to do track. <laughs> and, and for those, like, for those softball athletes out there, like, would you recommend, because, like, I, you know, I know you do instructions now with a lot of softball athletes, and they're sticking to one sport really early. You know, like in elementary school, like they're just sticking to softball or baseball, right? Mm -hmm. Would you recommend that they train like multi, like be multi sports athletes as long as they can until they focus on one, like maybe later in high school or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I would even recommend if your schedule or if you find a school that allows it, I would even recommend do multiple sports during college. I mean, is it rare? Yeah, but mm -hmm. I support multi sports. As do I. I'm glad because, I mean, I, I think that you gain a lot of skill sets like motor skills mm -hmm. and more athleticism from doing multiple sports rather than just like one sport in particular, right? Right. I can gain more speed and agility from the track and field mm -hmm. and apply that to the softball, you know? Right. And so you, you started doing select softball like really later on compared to most. And right. did right. you notice like a huge change in your skill set like immediately? Absolutely. Yeah. I was at the bottom. Everybody threw faster than me. Everybody <laughs> ran faster than me, hit harder. Mm -hmm. So that just pushed me to want to work harder. And when was it where you felt like you could play college softball? Or when did college scouts start talking to you? Probably late in my, no, I would say my junior year, they started talking to me. Okay. Yeah, I thought I was late because I, a lot of my teammates committed eighth grade freshman year and by the time I was on the team everybody had been committed or was going somewhere except for me so I was like wow. what am I going to get behind yeah. <laughs> and so did you did they reach out to you initially or did you reach out to them as far as like the scouting goes or did they see you at like a tournament and uh, all three actually so I would reach out to schools like hey my name is Asia James I'm a junior I play for da 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 I really like for you to come out and watch my game. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I would go to a camp or 
if we're having a tournament that weekend, there would be scouts out that week. Or if someone came and watched me that weekend, they would email me or email my coach and she would give them my email and we would just, that's how the process would really go. I think that's really important that like you took initiative, right? Because mm-hmm. I try to preach, we try to preach to our athletes that Jordan and I work with is like, hey, it's not just going to, most likely offers are not just going to fall in your lap unless mm-hmm. you're just like a phenom of phenoms, or like you're one in a million. Like I think it's important that you reach out to coaches, right? And I mean, would you, whenever you emailed them, did you just, you obviously told them a little bit about yourself. Did you have any video footage or was it mainly like, hey, I'm playing at this tournament at this time? Yeah, I actually, so our coach, made us individual videos that you could find on YouTube. I'm pretty sure if you type my name in, scrap your dog, it would show all my highlights of what positions I play, my hitting, defense, all of that. Just a complete skill set about me. And she did that for each of our players. Wow. And so would your recommendation be for softball athletes out there, find a select organization where they're truly trying to work for you to get a college scholarship? Yeah, I would say it goes both ways. Have mm-hmm. somebody there to support you but you also got to put in the work in on your own right because like you said it's not going to fall into your lap that's exactly right and and was UConn I mean how many schools were interested in you or like talking to you at the time I would say five to six wow that's awesome and UConn like what what made you make up your mind on deciding with uh, UConn so um, I knew that I wanted to get out of the state of Texas, mm-hmm. and I love seafood. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. it was also some help from my dad. He was just kind of like informing me what UConn is and what they're known for. And I know coaches or the staff say, don't let your parents make decisions. But, you know, at a time like that, I was just like, okay, I don't really know much about this school. Yeah, I looked them up, but it still doesn't make sense. My dad's like, UConn? Girl, do you not know who UConn is? Go Huskies, <laughs> national champions. And I'm like, let's go. Like, well, <laughs> it's not softball, but go Huskies. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wanted to get away, mm-hmm. and I went on a visit there, and I absolutely just loved the culture and I loved the um, university itself. The campus was just absolutely beautiful. It went too cold for you. No. Connecticut gets cold. I'm, I'm a weird one. I like okay. cold. I went and played in the snow. <laughs> I went and played in the snowstorm when I was little. I like it. So you took that official visit. You knew right away. You just had a gut feeling that like you called us a place for you. So I took an unofficial visit. Okay. Because I was traveling up to UMass to go take a visit there as well. Got you. But when, while I was there at my unofficial, like the girls just really made me feel loved and welcome and comfortable there where, and I feel like that's one thing that's really important. The girls there, the people who you're going to be playing with, you know. The vibe. Yeah. The ment- I mean, because I think it starts with the leadership, right? Like it starts with the coaching staff and it falls down to the team captains, upperclassmen. You want to have, uh, you know, a vibe that just feels good. Well, right? yeah, you, I feel like you can take out the, the coaches by because, you know, that's all going to change as soon as you sign the piece of paper. And, that's exactly right. Like, <laughs> Everyone's yeah. nice whenever you're yeah, on Yeah, they want to butter you up and you're <laughs> like, all right, where's that butter up? Okay, it's 6 a.m. She's yelling at me. Where was the smiles and butterflies and rainbows when I first got here? Yeah. And what was like the toughest transition for you becoming a collegiate athlete versus high school? Like right away... What was the largest, like, biggest challenge? I think the biggest challenge for me... Wow. Very interesting. (laughs) Was it, like, academics, or was it, like, more athletic end, or was it, like, did you kind of just... I think what it was was kind of accepting that I'm over a thousand miles away from my family, and I just can't walk out the door and go home, because in high school I did CrossFit. So I was already athletically prepared and ready for the movements or whatever they had us doing. And my dad also, being a military child, like he had me running and I was already prepared for anything athletic wise. And academic, I've always been a work hard type of person, make time for my studies. I'm not a complete A student, but I work hard for my knowledge. Good. Yeah, I struggled with academics personally. That was my biggest challenge. I did too. Don't ask me how many. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm trying to get this 3.0 and just like, you know. <laughs> this set the bar really low for us. They're like, hey, just get a 3.0. Yeah. 2.7. Like, just come on. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. See, don't ask me how I became an e-com major. Just e-com. know I got the paper. Don't, don't ask. <laughs> and so what Shout position? Shout out to Quizlet. <laughs> Quizlet. <laughs> now they got chat GBT. You know, they're giving them answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what, what position did you like initially start at? And did you like finish at that position in the field? Started. Oh, you mean in, like in college or growing up? Oh. Started center field, finished center field. Wow. Right away. Now, um, when I was starting, they were mixing me between left and center, even a little bit of right. I absolutely hate right field. You just the angle of the ball coming out the bat. Yes, like it was hard yes, to yes. Absolutely hate right field. I look like a newbie. Yeah. You know the newbie that you that's not at any good. You just throw in right field. And yeah. So your like, parents can take a picture. <laughs> picking picking day like dandelions. Yep, like, that, you know, that, that was me. <laughs> starting out. I would. I told my coach I'll play uh, left field or center field for you. I like that. You laid the foundation. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is what I just learned about you is that you were predominantly a right-handed hitter, but they taught you how to slap left-handed. Mm-hmm. And did that happen in college, or was that something that went back to high school? No, that went back to high school because at that time, slapping was very popular. We like to call it the high bounce. The high bounce was very popular, and they were like, oh, it's for your fast kids and stuff. My age, do you know how to slap them? No, so just we looked at some videos, and my dad and I went outside and we went to work on a tee, and you know they, they did decent, did, did good enough to make varsity. Yeah, yeah, it did something right. Yeah, but as I you know got on the scrapyard, like uh, there were older girls that knew what they were doing, and then we had a coach, and then we had college athletes like from Nebraska, from Oklahoma, who would come out, you know, mm-hmm. and offer wisdom, and that I just took that and just got better. That's awesome. And you said like bouncing. So is that whenever you're just trying to drive the ball into the ground and, yep, and hope that it pops up? Yep. You chop it over the third baseman's head and like make them jump and they can't reach it. That was the best feeling ever. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and what, what conference did you guys play in? Were you in the AAC already or was it Big East? Yes, we were in the AAC. Already. Okay, perfect. And how did you guys, you know, compete, you know, against other schools? Were you guys a pretty good, good program when you were there? <laughs> Did you perform well individually? I mean, that's all that, you know. So, <laughs> we were in the AAC for only one year. Okay. And that was my freshman year. And unfortunately, I did not get to play much in AAC because it, when our season started, I came down with mono. Oh, wow. And what year was that? 2019? Yes. Okay. And then you hit 2020. And then COVID came, so. So you got an extra, did you get an extra two years of eligibility or did, did you just get one from COVID? One for COVID. So I played enough for me to not get eligibility, but not how I would like, if that makes sense. Got you. But um, we, being in the AAC, just watching them, I was just, they were just, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And and did you guys have like a pretty strict weight regimen or like a uh, weightlifting routine that you followed or anything? Yeah, kind? yeah, Mo was awesome. Best lifting coach you could ever ask for. Right. You know, we just our team at the time we were just very athletically challenged. Yes. <laughs> as you would say. <laughs> but those girls they worked very hard. Good. That's probably what I loved about them the most. Yeah. They worked very hard, and they were determined to not finish last in AAC. And I'm pretty sure that we did it. I think, <laughs> I think we finished like six. Let's go. You made conference tournament. Yeah. Yeah. They then did. we got rained out. And yeah. then my teammates said, they hate Houston. We're never coming back here ever again. Ah. Oh, was that U of H? Yeah. Oh, that was U of- oh so y'all remember that? Bastards. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got rained out. So we- <laughs> I'll never forget. I had a runner on the first and second. <laughs> One out, sap was up, she's great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was like, like the first inning, we were ready to go. You ready? And, and like food wise, what were you guys eating? Like, I mean, was it just whatever you can get your hands on? Because I mean, that's kind of how it was for us. They're like, hey, here's Our whatever. They loved us. They loved you guys? Yeah, they took us out to Outback, um, Texas Roadhouse. My coach at the time, she believed in full meals, mm-hmm. full good meals. Did you feel like that impacted your performance on the field? No. No. I I felt great. I was a happy camper because that's how. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like in a good way. Like, do you feel like you perform better because? Oh of the yeah, food? yeah. Or I like... mean, that's what I grew up eating anyway. My mom was 
very big on protein, carbs, vegetables, drink your water, drink your Powerade, like, very... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure your father being in the military, he kind of had an idea of, like, mm-hmm. what to eat, how to treat his body. Right. That's awesome. And at the time, that's how we were eating, so I was perfectly fine with that. Good. Until I got a new coach. <laughs> And you're, and you're an economics major, correct? Yes. And so, you know, how was that, like, balancing out the student-athlete kind of lifestyle? It's a challenge. Yeah. It's a challenge. You know, you try to make time for your academics, and you try to make time for softball, then you try to make time for your social life. Right. And, you know, it's just... I don't even know how to explain that. You just got to learn how to... You just have to adapt, right? Yeah, like, you, there's you, no way to really... Figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> you know, uh, go to study hall and do your homework for about an hour. Because they give you guys, like, tutors and stuff like that, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have hours that you need to complete. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can get your homework done early in the week and still have, like, two hours to complete. Like, some people go in there and, like... Watch movies. Some people go in there and yeah, <laughs> that was, that was uh, yeah. Some people go in there and mess with their financial advisors. <laughs> hey, Alana. Yeah. And, and then there's some people who go in there and take pictures and who are actors and performers. <laughs> That's good. Is that a shout out? Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> People sending me pictures. Hey, is this your boyfriend? He's over here. <laughs> On top of the table. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. yeah, football player. They distracted me. They're like, <laughs> they got me into trouble. I got me watching Wolf of Wall Street, you know, and all of a sudden we got to run W's like all practice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And so, like, what would be like your main advice for, for young softball athletes trying to make it with aspirations of going to college? What kind of steps would you tell them to take, like as a ten-year-old, twelve-year-old? Wow, at that time, I just tell you enjoy the game. But enjoy you know, game. everyone's trying to get to college. I would say start that recruiting process early. Mm-hmm. And but not at ten, at least. Like at that time, you're still figuring out if you want to play the sport. Right. Like if you're for sure, like hey, I want to play softball. This is it. And, doesn't hurt to start that recruiting process, sending out emails early, getting in touch, uh, sending your schedule, hey, come, uh, I really like if you come watch my game, stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with ever doing that. Um, other than that, work on your craft and, you know, just be social. And, you know, when you make a mistake, that's what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Or when she makes a mistake, how does she react? Right. Yeah, they look at that, and they also look at what type of teammate you are. I think that's important, like not getting too up about anything, but not getting too down about anything. Yeah. Trying to like remain constant, yeah, keeping your emotions. I've, I've seen a lot of people who are like, "Great job! Oh my gosh, you're awesome!" Then they're like, "Yep." And it's like, <laughs> you just the coach is gone, so okay. Yes, exactly. So, you know, just be yourself. You know, work on your craft. And, hmm. I feel like I have a lot to say, but yeah, <laughs> come on, <laughs> say it. We're here for it. We're here for it. <laughs> I'm just trying to think what I did during my recruiting um, process. I kept a constant positive attitude. You know, worked hard. Worked hard when no one was looking. Did yeah. my work at home. Did my research. Kept my grades up. And, you know, yeah, uh, talk to anybody who's been in the game, mm-hmm. get any knowledge you can from them, because, you know, their season's over, their time is over, so all they have is knowledge and wisdom for you. Correct. And that's what you're doing now, correct? Like, right. as a professional, you're training athletes, and so, and, and you're, you're at D-Bat Humble up in 1960. Mm-hmm. And, and what has, like, been the greatest takeaway that you've seen from these young athletes? Like, what do you constantly see that these kids need to improve on? So many things. So many things. <laughs> but, like, do but, um, you, do you, like, when would you think is a good age for them to start working with an instructor, I guess? 
Um, Does it depend on the individual? I feel like it depends on the individual because, you know, I was just telling one of my girls today, like, she had this swing that Mm -hmm. I like to call a power swing. And, like, that's when, like, yeah, they drop their hands and, you know, they extend through the ball because, you know, they're trying to push it up and out or hit it up and out, which I've seen a lot of hitters with that swing. Yes. And I told her, like, I don't have a problem with that, but you need to understand the basic mechanics and you need to understand how the swing works and you're only 10 years old. So my challenge for you right now is to get to solid contact and when you get to solid contact, make sure your barrel is flat because she doesn't understand that swing. Correct. And I was telling her father, um, you know, I don't expect her to just change overnight and I don't expect her to understand my vocabulary of what I'm saying to her. But what I do expect is for her to take one or two things from today's session and work on it and remember it. How often do you think that they should be practicing what you're teaching them? Like, how often should they be hitting per week in your eyes? Um, I feel like it depends on the age. So mm-hmm. when you get to like that 14, 15, you should be hitting maybe four, three to four times a week. At least. At least. For sure. Because, I mean, that's what we did in college, you know, trying to prepare for a team. We were in that batting cage every day, almost every night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I get, I get discouraged whenever like, a kid comes up to me and they're like, yeah, I haven't hit since the last time I saw you. I'm like, well, that was two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not going to get any better, Junior, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so... Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's the kids who take it serious that you gotta, you know, because I feel like there are some kids, you know, that kid who hasn't hit in two weeks, you know, don't, don't stress yourself out. No, Just, but like, I think you made a really important point though about the line drive swing, like becoming a pure hitter first, mm-hmm. because I think that every hitter, and I see this a lot in baseball swings for the fences, Mm -hmm. but their body type might not be meant for that type of play, Mm -hmm. right? Like if you're 5'6", 145, why are you trying to hit home runs? Mm -hmm. You need to be hitting singles and doubles and stealing bases. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like do you find like the similar issue with softball players? See, I had to disagree with you there because I am a slapper and I was determined to hit a home run. You're determined? I got it. (laughs) (laughs) You got your home run in college? And I got it. Let's go. How many did you get? One. What year? This year. This year? Senior year? Yep. Let's go. No, no. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So you just graduated in 23? So, yeah, I graduated. Technically, I graduated in 2022, but with my COVID year, I did extra years. So. Did you know that you wanted to move back to Houston? Yes. Yeah. yeah it's yes. time to go back home. Yeah, it's time to go back home. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I definitely enjoyed my time there, the mm. memories I made, the friends I made, but it's time to go back. Um, That's what George said. He went up to Rhode Island to get away from his mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's time to come back to Houston. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But no, that other point that you asked about the body um, swinging for the fences. No, I I think if you want it, you'll work hard for it. Now, it wasn't Mm -hmm. always my goal to hit a home run. It took steps. First, I was a right-hand hitter who was determined to learn how to slap. Then I was a slapper who was determined how to hit a high, a high bouncer, or yeah, chopper. Then I was a high chopper, wanted to hit line drives. I was missing my power. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I wanted to be a triple threat. And I was in that range for a long time of trying to be a triple threat because I had to learn how to swing on the left side. Because all I would do was just pull, pull as far as swinging. And that, that took a long time for me because I was slapping. And I was like, okay, yeah, ball needs to go on this side of the field. Mm-hmm. But when I swing, I'm just pulling and pulling and pulling. So, you know, if it depends on what your goals are. Right. And, you know, if you're, I remember this little small chickadee. She was about, Evie was about five foot. And also Delilah, they were both like five foot, bravo. Her nickname was Bravo Carter Bravo. Okay. And she was just determined to hit a home run. And she was a great second hole hitter. She just line drive to the fence, line drive to the fence, line drive to the fence. She didn't get it. She didn't get that one. No, she never got it because <laughs> oh, <no>. she... 
<laughs> but, but I mean, listen. But she was, but she got closer and closer and closer every single time, and she was determined. So she's better for it. You know? Yeah, she probably became a better hitter in the process. She did, right? and she did. So. And that's kind of what I do with my kids. Like I'll put the L screen up, and I'll put a little circle in there. And or I'll put my ball on a tee and I'm like, I challenge you to hit this ball, I challenge you to hit this circle, and like they're determined to hit and they're determined to hit it. And little do they realize they went from pulling this ball to driving this ball. So, if you're to go back, okay, like would you recommend that if an athlete has speed that they learn how to switch hit and they learn slapping as well as you know, if they're if they're a right handed hitter naturally, Mm -hmm. would you immediately teach them how to uh, slap left handed? I would offer it to him. You'd offer it to him? I would offer. Because not everybody wants to learn how to slap. I know some really good right-handed hitters who are just fast and just, hey, I just wanted to stay on my right side. It sounds like you just need to be left-handed from the start. That just needs to be. (laughs) (laughs) No. No, no. It's just what I'm saying is you should have a choice and Mm -hmm. don't let nobody take your choice away because that's what happened to me. I like that because I feel like there's a lot of softball players who are just a good, pure right-handed hitter. Mm-hmm. And they don't ever have to learn left-handed right. because it's like, hey, they stroke the ball. They hit doubles, singles, mm-hmm. homers. And there's no, really no reason if you're batting above 350 to, like, learn how to right. slap, right? Now, if they want to, that's great. But, like, if they don't want to, like, I like to leave it in their hands. If you want something, come and tell me. Mm-hmm. And I will teach you to the best of my ability. What was the toughest team you guys played against at UConn? Because I know there's some good softball teams. You guys ever play OU? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Florida's a, Florida's a force. Florida, wow. Well, those girls are playing travel softball from age like two. Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't mess around. Like, that's not the <laughs> Giants. Softball dads I scare me. I think the me. shortest person was like 5'8". On the team. Five, eight. Yes, on the team. The shortest person was 5'8". And they're like, ranked top five? Yeah, top like, I think the tallest is probably 6'7". <laughs> probably the pitcher. Just long legs. <laughs> <laughs> What's your, what, do, what would you say is like your greatest collegiate memory? Like, as a, like from a team standpoint, like as a softball athlete? Uh, I would say from a team standpoint... Oh, there's so many. Like, I'll do some goofy stuff on the bus and stuff. Or like. Oh, you mean stuff like that? That's oh, yeah. Mean. Just some goofy. I don't know. <laughs> well, I remember <laughs> there was this one time we got in trouble during COVID because mm-hmm. we went to a party. <laughs> yeah. Who found out about it? Did, did the coach? Well, the, the team had, a, we had a snitch. Yeah. And Were they on the team? Yeah. That's not cool. No, it's not cool. They weren't starting, were they? They were starting. Oh, okay. Well. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought they were trying to get a job, you know, a spot on the team. No, so <laughs> we went to this college party and just being college students, and you know, it's COVID, so our coach is strict. Don't go out. Don't, don't, don't do this. Stay in your rooms. Yeah. And then you know, she found out, and she's like, if any, if I find out anyone's out, you're being suspended. Well, it turns out half the team was there, majority. I think 14, because it was a small team, it was like 14, I think 18 or yeah. 21 were there. And we're like, well, you can't suspend the whole team. So, Because you guys weren't even playing at that point, right? No, we weren't. It was, it was in the fall. It was in the fall. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but still. So I'll never forget. It was 5 a.m. She told us to come out to the baseball field at 5 a.m. <laughs> and we had uh, all of our UConn gear in a black duffel bag and we all took a picture and, like, <laughs> and we had to run bases to the bigger field yes <laughs> yes and i had never seen my coach be so detail oriented in my life she's like when you run out the b- box you need to check where the ball is you need to have this part of your foot touch the middle of the bag you need to lean and you need to turn, and you need to do 13 of them or 14 of them because that's how many of you were out. And we had to do that for each bag. So we had to run each bag 14 times. So we had to run 14 singles, doubles, triples, and home runs. 
<laughs> and I've never seen so many people claim asthma. <laughs> right, all of a sudden. The, the, yeah. I've never seen so many people claim asthma. <laughs> and so if you screwed up, did you have to go back to one? Yes. Oh. It doesn't matter if one person screwed up, we started all over again. Okay. And I just remember just like, at the time we were mad, yeah, but it was so funny. It was, a, it was, funny. It was a good memory. Okay. It, it was a good memory. It was like, you know, laugh at our pain type of thing. Yeah. Like, we're all going through this together. Yeah, we're all going through this together. <laughs> we're all the clowns here at the circus. It's fine. For it's, sure. Because I'm pretty sure at that time, the book of the season was the Red Bucket Hat. Okay. I don't know if you read that, but it was a chapter called The Circus, and... We were in the circus there. That's what the Yukon Huskies were that year. Yeah. Okay. The, the red bucket hat, or the bucket hat, or the red hat. Something Jordan, like let's check that out. Yeah. Well, Asia, thank you so much for uh, for being a guest on our show today, and let's do this again sometime. Oh, we appreciate course. it. Thanks for having me. Don't quote me on that party. <laughs> Three, two.